Good afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world. We are doing some more EG33 stuff today. So as I said in the last video, we need to take a lot of measurements to be able to make sure that we can order the right parts for this engine. Luckily, TMG has a couple spare OEM STI rods and pistons up there that we can go up there and measure. So I've got my notebook, I've got my calipers. Uh, we're gonna take all the OEM piston and rod size measurements that we can. If we have an OEM crank up there, I'd like to pull some measurements off that as well. But this is really gonna enable us to be able to figure out what rods and pistons we can use in the EG33, because if they're the exact same in the EG as they are in the EJ, then we can just bolt right up EJ rods and pistons to this engine, which would make life a lot better. Now it's also gonna depend on the stroke of the cylinder size as well for rods, but if the if the eg33 rods and the oem sti rods are the same length same everything measurement wise and we can just easily drop those in so melanie and i are going to go party we're gonna go sit in traffic because it's like 5 p.m on a thursday go up to tmg get these measurements and then uh one of you guys jose really appreciate it is letting me use his company 23 crank pulley tool up until we get ours so that is a huge help thank you my dude hopefully we see you this evening and uh we can snag that tool off you but Let's go kick it up at TMG. Just got to the mod garage. Uh, whole party here. Uh, Christian, Ryan, Tina, me, Brian. Uh, so Ryan has a OEM EJ257 in there that we're gonna go, it's already stripped down to just the case halves essentially. We just gotta split the case halves. Then we can pull measurements off of the rods, the pistons, and the cylinder bore. So we're gonna go crack this thing apart real quick. After we get it cracked apart, we'll grab the measurements, we'll head out, we should be good. So let's do this, let's get this done with. So this is the short block we're gonna be splitting open. This thing looks so much tinier after playing with the EG. This thing looks itty bitty, uh, but we need cylinder bore measurements. We need the rod and piston measurements out of here also. I'd like to pull some crank measurements while we have the opportunity to do so. So Ryan and I are gonna knock this out, get this thing split open. It shouldn't take more than like 10, 15 minutes to do. Um, once we get it open, we'll get the rod and the pistons separated and uh, start taking measurements. I brought my fancy notebook over here so that way we can uh, write everything down. Uh, I'll post all of these measurements down in the description below for anyone else that wants them or needs them. And then once we have all that, uh, we can go back, we can start tearing apart the EG a little bit more and start getting this measurement situation figured out to see if we can use EJ257 rods and pistons in the EG. So if you guys don't actually know how the pistons and the rods hang out in there, these are the access panels on the front of the block. You got two up here and you got two in the rear also. So if you can see right in there to that hole, there is a small little clip doodad guy. We're gonna take that clip out and then inside of that clip is the wrist pin. Kind of, well, we just pound that out. After that's pounded out, we can pull the piston out, do that for all four of them. And then we can split this thing. Oh yeah, pull her out, Ryan. Gonna do it. Pull her out. Mm. At least they make the pins relatively accessible. I mean, Subaru engines already aren't fun to disassemble. Oh, 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 oh there's one. It's a little tough. You gotta make sure you have. Oh, that's gone. That grab really well. That's gone. Give me that. Give me that right there. Give me that. Can't. Oh, I got it. Ha <laughs> ha! One handed. Oh, you got right. gloves? Oh! Oh, we got it! <laughs> Dope! There's one. You wanna. Yeah, uh, you wanna knock out this side too? Hey, well, hold up, hold up. All right, make a poop. Make a poop. Make a poop. Make a poop. Okay. There's one. I got in there. Yeah. Gonna poop it out. Oh, oh, I got it. You got it? Yeah. It's a girl. Uh, I need to rotate this more to get this side. There we go. Now I can see it. Oh, I see. I see what you mean. I think I'm on it. Where'd you go? Oh, oh it's coming. Oh no, it's not coming because because you moved the rock. Now you gotta move back tiny big. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. No, he's got it. Oh, we got it at this point. Uh, Thank you though. Other way? More? Other way then. Other way? Yeah, yeah, because you went the wrong way. Oh, here you go. Okay, now poop it out. Here you go. Can I get to it though? That's the question. Uh, now, there we go, dude. Now we have a straight line. I mean, it was like a horse. No, it was not. Oh, it's a boy. Woo! Slippery boy. Oh, there you right go. there. There's one. Grab her. Grab her. Uh, Suck her out. I can't. Can you can you go more? No. I think you just kinda have to boop. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whoa. Now you broke the bolt loose. You just told me to do that! No, well, that didn't work. Yeah, let me get something to pry it out, because right, pull her out. Just pull her out. Just pull her out. Just pull her out. Oh, oh there we go. Wow, look at that. These pistons look terrible. That, that is what happens when you run out of oil. Uh, Ooh. Oh that would be nice God. to share with everyone. Bro, this. <laughs> We've oh, reached this our, was, oh, right here. This right was here. cylinder four, by the way. Let's split this, uh, yeah. 
Unironically, uh, Cylinder 4 seemed to take the most beating. Cylinder 4 did Gave take the little... most beating. Oh yeah, that's what happens when you run out of oil. So Ryan and I just pulled out the pistons and what this one came in with like a quart of oil, starved to oil, That'll that's what'll happen to your cylinder. So Cylinder 4 took quite the beating. Uh, actually, I'm curious, did we look at the block itself, the actual the cylinder? The cylinder itself actually doesn't look bad. Oh yeah, it does right up top. Ooh. I don't know if you can see in there, Mel, right up on top of the cylinder. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's nice drag there's, marks there's right there. Huge scoring going all the way Sliding. across from the, the piston. So that's what happens when you run out of oil. Sliding raw. Yeah, don't don't go in dry, guys. <laughs> don't go in dry. Oh, oh dude, these come out yes. so nice. This is the right. These ones. All right, you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Good job on this boy. Let me get the this side. I think it's because this side holds. Is that it? Is that the last one? It would be the smallest bolt that would still hold this thing together. I know, right? Hulk it! There we go! That's what's up! So huge shout out to Ryan and TMG right now um, for helping me just taking some time to disassemble an OEM block to, be, to allow me to be able to get some of these measurements. Uh, I've gotten all the measurements needed out of this short block that we aren't gonna have. They're also nice enough to let me take. They've let me take one of everything that's kind of disposable, the rod, the piston, uh, just everything that we need to be able to pull measurements off of. Off of the short block, I was able to pull the stroke and the bore of the engine to be able to compare those against the EG. I really wanna see if those EG internals are the same as the EJ, which I'm assuming they're going to be very close. If they're not the exact same, then of course we're gonna have to go and have custom pistons and rods made, which is going to get expensive. We don't wanna do that. We don't wanna do that if we can avoid that. But I mean, if you guys haven't seen the inside of an EJ before, this is essentially what it looks like. Uh, this is where your crank sits. This is your crank, your flywheel bolts up to the end of it right there. So all of your rods are spaced accordingly on the crank. Um, and then obviously the crank inlays into the block. Your pistons go in right here and then in, able, and then in order, to get the pistons out. Like I said, there's these access holes on the front and the back of the engine to go through there and knock out the sleeves to be able to get the pistons from the rods. But that is uh, pretty much everything that we need from up here. So once again, huge shout out to TMG. Uh, they got a banner up there. Bloop. TMG and Ryan for uh, helping me knock this out, get some of these measurements. So let's kick it back down to the garage. Um, also a huge shout out to Jose for letting us borrow his company 23 crank pulley tool because this thing is going to come in handy to get the uh, crank pulley off of the EG as well. So let's swing back down to the garage. We'll start pulling the EG apart some more and uh, start comparing some of these measurements. All right, you guys, so it is the next day. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. So if you are not in it for the long haul, well, just keep watching because we're, we're already committed at this point. So let me guys show you something real quick and then we're gonna get cracking into this EJ because I just wanna jump into this. So once again, shout out to the Mod Garage uh, for giving us these stock EJ internals. We have a piston, a rod, a head bolt, uh, bearings, that kind of stuff, just to be able to compare against the EG. Uh, we did get the timing cover off and that pulley off. It took both Matt and I to uh, be able to get this guy off of here. So. Now that we have the timing cover off, I'm gonna get going on getting all these timing components off. Um, the way I'm gonna do this is take off the tensioner, get uh, all the tension off the belt, get the belt off, and then just start pulling all of these pulleys off to give us access to be able to get these heads off. I'm not quite sure about how I'm gonna tackle these cams yet, but once I get one side figured out, I'll definitely walk you guys through and I'll show you how to put the how to do the other side. So I am gonna put it on a time lapse for this, but after I get this figured out, I will walk you guys through it and uh, kind of show you step by step on how I'm doing this. Hi right, you guys, so uh, this is a little bit annoying. These cam gears are fucking awful to take off. I've been reading the Subaru manual for this thing and uh, they don't really touch on how to get the cam gears off in a good way. So uh, we're doing a, a pretty easy DIY, DIY way because I don't plan on reusing this timing belt ever, like ever. So we are using the old timing belt to get these cam gears off. Um, Essentially what I'm doing is I'm putting a lot of tension on the timing belt. So once this is torqued down, the timing belt's gonna turn a little bit, but it's not gonna turn a lot. It's gonna turn enough for us to be able to get that off. So a uh, cheater bar and a breaker bar seem to have been working pretty well. So let's do this yet again. You gotta be careful of the heads though, because you don't wanna just keep like ranking on timing. Right there. That's fine, we can work with that. Now for the scary part. 
Oh, we got it. These cam gear bolts uh, suck to take off. I'm gonna tell you guys that right now. But if you don't plan on reusing the timing belt, works awesome. I can pull all these pulleys off now and I can get these plastic covers off to get more access to the cams themselves. Which is what we're gonna do next. You guys, I want you guys to know something. There is a degree of which I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Um, but I read the service manual, so I feel like I can get this figured out. I mean, it looks like we're making some solid progress. I'm not gonna lie. It looks like things are coming off and, you know, if things are coming off, that's gotta be good, right? I think we're at the point where we're now ready to, these little like cam sprocket dealios on the sides, um, they are quite the pain to get off. I have been struggling with them. There is sealant on them holding them on. So this is fun. I should really be marking these bolts, but I'm not. No part of me is marking these bolts. There's supposed to be like a service bolt on the back of this cam gear, but I haven't seen it anywhere. I've rotated this cam gear quite a few times. Um, haven't quite seen anything yet. Okay, so this is this is quite, it's just, it's just, you know, struggle old things. So I got the cover off on this side. The way I did it is obviously there's two bolts that hold the left side of the cover over to the actual main block. Take out the four bolts. After that, I just tapped this with a hammer lightly, like that small little mallet down there. Just tap it lightly, and it's gonna give you a small gap to work with the start with so you can start getting this thing off. Uh, once you get this cover off, then we can actually move to the cams, get to the service bolt and actually start getting the intake cam off. Uh, the exhaust cam should be similar. We are gonna have to position the cams after we get this cover off to make sure that we aren't damaging anything uh, on the cylinder head because it's a very tight clearance. We don't, want it, we don't want the cams to destroy anything. Even though we are replacing it, I'd still like to do this the proper way. So uh, let me get this cover off real quick and then we'll continue getting this part off. I'm only gonna film taking off uh, one of these heads after we get this head off uh, I'm gonna do a live stream on the other head but let's get this guy off let's do the thing let's get this other one off so we are still on there pretty tight so I need to get up in the bottom if you are doing it this way make sure you're not gonna hit the cam on the back side uh, last thing you want to do is demolish your cam gear no one wants that nobody wants you to demolish your cam gear I promise so next thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna pull out the cam. Um, it should rotate and ploop right out. We need to break these six bolts loose equally. So I'm not gonna use I'm not gonna use an impact for this. That's not a smart idea at all. We're gonna use a standard hand dealio. So we're just gonna do a little bit at a time on each one. Ah -ha -ha! We have our intake cam. Now, uh, now let's do the exhaust cam and get that out. There's our cylinder head, man. These buckets just want to ploop right out. That's fine. That's fine. If they want to come out, they can come out. I have no quarrel against them if they do. Dope. We are now ready to uh, pull the cylinder head off. Stay in there, bucket. So we're now ready to pull the cylinder head off on this side. This bucket just, watch it. Blue. It's fine, it's whatever. Um, yeah, we're now ready to pull the cylinder head off. So we're gonna go around, we're gonna pull out all of these uh, head bolts going around. There is a sequence to pull them off. Um, as I'm doing it, I will show you guys a sequence. I need to find a 12 point socket that'll uh, fit these guys though. Okay, I do wanna say this because I didn't do this when I pulled off my cams, uh, but there is an order to loosening the cam bolts. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. In that order to uh, get the cam, uh, cam, carrier guys on that you guys know what i'm saying the the covers for the cams to keep the cams in place so there is an order for that that is the order now we're going to pull off the cylinder head bolts order for those guys is going to be one two three four five six seven eight so let's get to pulling this guy off so that way we can uh get the cylinder head off and take a look at those pistons those pistons Oh, wow, the, uh, oh. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Those are really on there, dude. Look at that, the actual extension broke off in the socket. Um, so, I mean, those are those are incredibly tight. Uh, that was with a cheater bar. I really liked that extension also. Now I gotta 
wiggle this thing off. There it is. There's our, oh, cool it. And there's our head. There's a cylinder. There's a piston. It looks pretty clean, guys. I'm not gonna lie, I'm hyped. We got one of the heads off. Woo! That's exciting. That's exciting. Let me grab the camera, I'll show you guys some of this stuff. It's pretty cool. So this is actually pretty neat, you guys. So we got the, what is this? The left, the left, right? We got this head off. Um, it is off. It's, oh, I'm stoked. I'm pumped. Look how thick those cylinder walls are too. I like that. Uh, one thing that the FAs have that I kind of want to do to this is mill and machine out a small channel in between each of these for coolant flow, uh, just because it does drastically increase it. I see all the case half bolts in here too. Uh, we'll split those in another episode. But uh, just to show you guys the cylinder head, because I don't know if a lot of you guys have seen the inside of an engine, this is essentially what it looks like. Our head gasket is like stuck onto the head, which no, no big deal. Uh, but here we have our intake valves up top, our exhaust valves on the bottom. They all look surprisingly solid, to be honest. Like, they, it all looks extremely clean. This is really good for us. It means that the engine was very happy, very healthy getting this off. Um, so as you guys saw, after I pulled off all of the head bolts, you do need to tap it a couple times with a mallet. Just tap it slightly, it softly, be gentle with it, and the head will come right off. You have these locating dowels on here. You don't want to bend or damage any of them when you're pulling off your heads. But this is so exciting, you guys. Uh, this one I'm going to pull off on a live stream. So that's all the disassembly you guys are going to see in this video. Um, and the next one, we'll go over measurements comparing the EG over to the EJ's cylinders, um, seeing what exactly is the same, what's not the same. Uh, we'll disassemble the case half in the next episode also. But this is fun. I'm not going to lie. Those bolts are on there so freaking tight. It is awful to get them off, but we got them off. Uh, one extension died in the process, but no big deal. All right, you guys, so there you have it. We have a cylinder head off of the car as promised. Uh, getting those cam gears off did really suck using that timing belt to do it. But you know, I'm hyped, I'm pumped that we were able to get it off. This next one I'm gonna be doing on a live stream. So if you're watching this in the future and you were in the live stream, appreciate you guys swinging by and whatnot. But uh, like I said, that's all I got for you guys on this one in the next episode. We'll split the case half open. We'll compare measurements from the EJ over to the EG. But if you like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit that like button and turn it blue like the actual color of the Subaru parked out on the street right now. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. Hit your boy up. One of these corners, no idea which one quite yet. Actually, it'll be that top right one. And a friendly reminder, we have our new merch dropping on the 30th. Yes, I'm going to be promoting that until it comes out. So I'll put it somewhere in videos. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies.